Uh, I wanted to situate this uh, initially on where we are with Delta because what's happening is Omicron is coming on the back of a still high rate of Delta transmission and hospitalisation. So in the first slide, what we have is the number of people testing positive for COVID uh, in the UK. Uh, and that has been drifting upwards, not at a very rapid rate, but it has been drifting upwards. Uh, the Omicron uh, data aren't really going to be visible in this uh, for a few days, but they will become visible over time. Next slide, please. Uh, the number of people in the hospital with COVID in the UK has, uh, because of uh, the booster vaccination programme in particular, uh, been drifting down uh, at, until this point in time, with the numbers going into hospital uh, reducing, although that's now stabilised slightly. Uh, and that's really because the boosters are particularly going to protect and are protecting people who are in the highest uh, risk categories, as the Prime Minister has said. Next slide, please. And the number of people in the UK who are dying uh, has again gradually been decreasing over time, but uh, is still uh, an av a daily average uh, of 121 deaths from COVID. So we still have a significant issue with COVID, and I think anybody who speaks to anyone working in the NHS would say that is on top of an incredibly busy system. Next slide, please. In terms of our main major countermeasures, of course, the biggest one, as the Prime Minister has said, is boosting. Uh, and this is steadily increasing. So we now have over a third of those who are eligible have already had a booster, and they are by and large, the most vulnerable uh, third, but there's still people who are in, uh, in, in higher risk groups who have not been boosted. Uh, and of course, we have to move down those groups. And that is going to become absolutely critical, we think, uh, as we move on to, into a period where Omicron becomes significant and probably then becomes dominant. Next slide, please. And if uh, this is uh, just a data, data just to uh, show quite how effective with the variants we've had to date, vaccination ha uh, can be. And what it compares is in the dark lines, the hospitalisation rate in the, the blue-black uh, bars uh, in those who are um, unvaccinated uh, and in the uh, orange bars, those who are vaccinated with two doses. This is uh, largely protecting against Delta. But as you can see, at every age, a really substantial improvement uh, in your protection. Next slide, please. So now we move on to the data on Omicron. And these are data probably people have seen ver versions of in, uh, in media over the last few days. But I think they do need, uh, point, uh, need sort of uh, fleshing out a bit. So these are the number of people testing positive for COVID-19 in South Africa. At this point in time, the big increase in COVID uh, in South Africa is virtually all uh, the Omicron variant. And uh, this is now spread all around South Africa. And as you can see, this is an incredibly steep increase uh, in rates. Uh, and we're now seeing this translating into increasing in increases in hospitalization. So for example, I was talking to some of my colleagues from South Africa this afternoon, and they were saying that uh, informal data still to be, uh, still to be uh, added to, but there was around about a 300 uh, percent increase on hospitalizations uh, over the last week. Uh, so um, some of those will have come in with uh, Omicron and some of them will come in as a result of Omicron. Uh, but the fact is those numbers are going up very sharply. Next slide, please. So what's happening here in the UK? Well, I'm afraid that um, the data here are now uh, clear. Uh, what you can see here is the uh, number on the left and on the right, the percentage of cases with, a, with what's called S-gene target failure. This is a marker for Omicron. Virtually all the cases now who've got this marker will have Omicron. A very small number at the bottom will not. And as you can see, whether you look at the absolute count or the percentage, this is going up incredibly fast now. And as the Prime Minister has said, this is doubling at this point in time. It may slow down, and the aim of the measures uh, announced by the Prime Minister is, is to slow things down. But it's doubling currently between two and three, every two and three days. That is an extraordinarily fast rate, and you therefore can get with very small numbers to very large numbers really quite quickly. Now, the question, uh, obviously, people reasonably want to ask is, will this feed through to people in hospital and how quickly? 
And I think I'd just like to uh, just point out two realities. First of all, uh, the, the first one is a good one, that the moment the spread is in younger people, who would, you would not expect to go into hospital, and it's once it starts moving up the ages and into vulnerable groups, that you'll start to see that. So there will be a lag as it moves into more vulnerable groups. And then we know from previous ways, and this is not particularly surprising, that there is a delay between people becoming infected with COVID and ending up with symptoms and then with hospitalisation. So there's usually about a two-week delay. We would therefore not expect that these cases, that the case rates in hospital will start to go up for a number of probably two to three weeks. And in that period, if you're doubling up at the speed we're talking about now, we move from very small numbers to really substantial numbers and it will keep on doubling. And that really is the uh, reason why these measures have been announced uh, by the Prime Minister as agreed by uh, ministers today. Thank you very much. Thanks.